five, four, three, hands on keys, turn. Greetings and felicitations. This is Michael Haspel. On this episode of uh, Quantum Froth Dispatches, I bring you an interview with Betsy Dornbush. Betsy is another Colorado writer, so that means she's pretty awesome. Uh, Betsy writes epic fantasy and has dabbled in science fiction, thrillers, and erotica. Her short fiction has appeared in over 20 magazines and anthologies, and she's the author of three fantasy novellas. Uh, Her first fantasy novel came out in 2012, and her latest trilogy, Books of the Seven Eyes, which is incredible, uh, wrapped up with Enemy in 2017. The Silver Scar, a standalone future fantasy novel, was uh, called by a spellbinding saga by Publishers Weekly, and uh, she's an author of over a dozen short stories, and as I already mentioned, lives in Colorado. Now, if you're going to be around Colorado, um, Betsy's going to be doing a promotional tour for The Silver Scar. And The Silver Scar is a high fantasy novel set in post-apocalyptic Boulder, Colorado. And it's kind of got uh, Wiccans and uh, Christians and arch wardens and a crusade. Uh, it's, It's pretty... It's pretty epic. (laughs) It's pretty amazing. So uh, that debuted this week, came out, and it is available at bookstores everywhere right meow. So uh, if you're going to be in Colorado, uh, Betsy will be appearing at um, the Old Firehouse Books in Fort Collins on November 7th. Uh, So uh, go and check that out. If you are in the Fort Collins area, and if you're in the greater Denver area, on Saturday, November 10th, she will be appearing with uh, Carrie Vaughn at the uh, Legendary Book Bar um, as part of the science fiction and fantasy reading series that uh, JL Force puts together. So uh, go out and check that out, too. The Book Bar is an, an amazing venue. I haven't been to the other uh, the place in Fort Collins, but the Book Bar is very, very solid. Really, really cool. Um, and I can't recommend the uh, trilogy, The Books of the Seven Eyes, enough. It is it is really good epic fantasy. Just really, really good. So uh, without any more uh, ado, I give you Betsy Dornbush. Okay, and we're back on Quantum Froth Dispatches, and I'm here with Betsy Dornbush, who is a writer of a fantasy trilogy, which is pretty awesome. Uh, the first book is called Exile, the next is called Emissary, and the last is Enemy. And uh, I will have read like a little um, intro and okay. everything, but uh, tell people about yourself. Um, I'm a fantasy writer, which you already said, and I live in Colorado, and I call myself basically a herder of teenagers. It's like cats, but they cats don't talk back. <laughs> that's about it i like football and i like punk rock concerts nice yeah. nice. that's the basic rundown <laughs> cool um well what what particular thing drew you to like write fantasy like out of out of all the different genres i think um reading primarily though i'm pretty i wide i read widely and i always have um but i think as a kid, getting to escape to a fantasy world was my was my sort of go-to. Um, and I really have always liked Portal Stories, too, which actually, um, Exile is sort of a um, pretend Portal Story because he goes to, he gets exiled to a different country. Mm-hmm. In its first incarnation, it was an actual Portal Story. Um, and then I realized that probably wouldn't sell because they're sort of overdone. But I've always liked that um, I've always liked that concept. Like I, I loved 
Lion, the, Rich, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, and um, I, you know that kind of stuck with me. So, and I love the idea of getting to make up everything and not having rules where people can come and say, um, "But you did that wrong," and it's like, "No, that's my world." So <laughs> I did it right. <laughs> I really like that freedom. So, yeah. And you came up with some particularly nasty monsters in your yeah yeah, yeah they, sort of some zombie ish. Well, I, they're like and, on the level of the Nazgul. They're yeah, really bad. Yeah, they're pretty <laughs> badass. Yeah. <laughs> um, do you consider yourself like a uh, plotter or a pantser? Um, I'm a loose plotter, um, and everybody always cringes. Well, writers always cringe when they hear me say this, but I actually write a tagline first. Um, we share an agent, Michael and I, and so um, it, Sarah loves loves me, I think, because of that. But we share, we do a, uh, I do a tagline first, and I kind of run that, I socialize it with some friends, and then I write back cover copy oh. and see if it feels like um, it's a story that is interesting. And then I write a synopsis, which sounds really horrible to most writers, except they're so much easier to write before there's an actual book. So that's how I plot. I tell myself the story in sort of short form first. Um, feel like there's no holes, you know, major holes. Um, it kind of enables me to pick those out before I really get writing and get a sort of feel for what I'm going to need. And then I start writing. So things change as I go. That's why I call it loose because my I don't know that my um, synopsis necessarily matches the final book. Okay. But that's kind of my process. Yeah, because I was going to ask that. Like, if you if you use the synopsis and outline, or do you just write it at first, set it aside, and then just write the book? Um, a little of both. I do, you know, I do refer to it, but it's funny, I forget to refer to it. So what happens is I end up, um, I you know, I end up getting stuck, and then I'm like, oh, yeah, I wrote this nifty, like, 15-page synopsis. I should probably <laughs> go back and take a look at that. Um, so I kind of put it away and forget. And But generally, I find I stick pretty close to it, so it, somehow it kind of embeds itself in my brain. And I've just gotten, I guess, I'm, I, I think I'm less insecure as a writer than I was before in a lot of ways, and particularly with plotting. And so I feel like I, I need the security of knowing basically where I'm headed that there's an, you know, a satisfying ending that, you know, so that that's, it's like my crutch. The synopsis yeah, yeah. is my crutch. Yeah. Yeah. That's good. Yeah. That's, <laughs> that's probably very useful. I'm, I'm going to have to try that <laughs> because, <laughs> because I'm a, I'm a plotter, but often I just, I don't have the synopsis until everything's done. So. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I, I learn in prose, you know, I learn as I write, so I have to, I, that's how I have to do it. I couldn't actually make you know, a bulleted outline that would not work for me. Mm -hmm. um, now, you know, I can do when I do work on novellas, um, I typically do um, a chapter by chapter. So that's a little more of a bulleted type feel. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's a little more organized. It seems like the smaller the work, the more I plot. And then my short stories are pretty well plotted. I I have a diagram that I use and I'm, I'm pretty rigorous about um, about using that as a crutch again, because I know from myself that if I don't know pretty much what's going to happen or what's supposed to happen, I won't finish it. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. And those are so tight too. They're tight. Just, they help me keep them yeah. more concise. Yeah. Yeah. So what, what according to you is the hardest thing about being a writer or, or authoring? Um, that's a good question. You know, I think it changes from day to day. Sometimes it's that scene you're working on and other times it's, um, the emails that you have to do, like I have a book coming out. And so right now I've spent a lot of time on, um, on managing that and managing promo and, and, um, a lot of sort of business stuff. Um, I think I've mentioned before that I, I hate copy edits. So, um, oh, yeah. that's when I hate my life as an author. Like I really dislike doing copy edits. Um, so that's probably the worst part for me. And I don't know if it's because I think I'm so bad at copy edits or it's because I've seen the book so many times that I can't stand looking at it anymore. I don't know. I always, I always come <laughs> away from copy edits feeling like this book's horrible and no one's ever going <laughs> to, why would anyone read this? Like, you know, it's, it's, I don't know. It's somehow it strikes at my insecurities. Copy oh, edits yeah, do yeah. for some reason. I don't know why. It's 
It's weird. Yeah. Well, by the time I think I got to mine, I, that was like my 24th draft or something. I just didn't even want to read the book anymore right, at all. Right. Yeah. And you can't, it's, it's really hard because you've read it so many times, you just start skipping over things. So it's really hard to see things. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I, so I found. As a companion question to that. Okay. What's the easiest thing about mm, being a The easiest thing. Um, I don't know, because I don't find any of it all that easy. Um, I, I, to me, it's all of it is challenging, and um, I always have to sort of gear myself up to write or to to do revisions. Um, probably, you know, those first few pages mm-hmm. when you're really in that the big like the first evening of the honeymoon <laughs> <laughs> i think that's when it's easiest and and it's scary because you you start writing and you think oh am i is this really going to be something um but i've but i've thrown away um you know hundreds of thousands of words also so i know that that's okay um that that it's you know it doesn't necessarily mean it's not worth anything but still it, that's probably the most fun time yeah 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 um all right so folks throughout their lives like grad grad uh gravitate towards Mm -hmm. other uh towards specific kinds of stories or towards good stories or stories that mean something really special to them Mm -hmm. do you have a story that's like that like um when you were younger or when uh, you know how does it change like which one's the um and it's cool because i was just on a panel about this so i've I've examined this at length um but the outsiders is the book for me as a kid um i met essie hinton in fourth grade she came to my school and i had just started writing stories with my friend sherry joseph who is still sherry joseph and his a writer and a professor of writing wow and um and, you know, we used to draw a lot together and write stories, and it was just really kind of cool and free form. And, um, and, and she came, and she had these books that were about teenagers. Well, I had teenage brothers, so to me, they, they were completely out of reach. So I actually didn't read the book till I was like, I think it was seventh grade, maybe. And I can't remember if it was, you know, it might have been the copy I got when she came to visit. It might have been given to me at school. I can't remember mm-hmm. how I first came across it, but I, I read tons of stuff. I was reading um, books and books and books at that age. So um, somehow I ran across it and it, it, it was formative. Um, it, she was, to me, she was closer to my age because she was about 16, 17 when she wrote it. Mm-hmm. And so it, I was like, wow, I can, I can do that. This. this is a thing I could do. You know, she wrote a book so I can write a book. So it was cool on that level. But I also was, you know, this very geeky, shy kid that had no friends. And I had moved in sixth grade and I had a kid tormenting me at school and, you know, the typical middle school sob story. And so I wrote my first book after seventh grade that summer. Wow. And so, and I still have it. I still have my, my little handwritten book that I wrote. And, um, and that was the first time I, I guess, I sort of got that confident. I wasn't even that great of a student. So it was sort of the, the first glimpse of, wow, I can actually do something. Like, this is a thing I can do. And I did actually even finish the book. Wow. So, yeah. Okay. So it was, it, that was, you know, that was cool. But, you know, you talked about um, how books change or, or mm-hmm. you might have a different book. And for me, it's still the same book because I, I look back at that and I think, that influences a lot of um, the class struggle that I think I look at in stories mm-hmm. and um, the makeshift family, which, you know, none of that's that original, I guess, except everybody does it their own way. Yeah, um, yeah. But, uh, you know, so to me, that book just goes through a lot of levels of depth and I can find I think I could read it today probably and find a new thing in it. Every you know? time, yeah. So that's the one that speaks to me. Everybody's got theirs, you know. Yeah. But yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, so a lo- kind of along those lines, since you started re- writing so early, mm-hmm. uh, obviously the, the first book you wrote is not the first book that got published. But right. How, how many other books did you write before? Um, I wrote... Um, uh, technically, my first full-length novel was published. Oh, so, okay. So, yeah. Um, 
not the first incarnation of it by any means, but um, Archive of Fire was my first book that was published, and um, it was the first of, of four. And what happened was the company got sold, um, so I didn't have the opportunity to keep writing. Plus, after it, pretty soon after it was finished, I sold Exile and then Emissary, oh, and I had okay. I had other projects coming up on board, and so I didn't get to get back to it. Um, I do actually have those books written. I have um, I, I somewhere, you know, on hard drive somewhere. <laughs> I've got three more of those books written, probably not very good. Um, you know, they would need a lot of work, but they are written. So, I, I, you know, as far as how many, um, I mean, my fifth novel comes out and then plus, you know, three. So I guess eight. Wow. And then I yeah. have another one, nine. And I just started my, ten, I guess I just started my 10th novel this. Like, wow. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like last month. So I guess, yeah, that's, a, that's a few. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> that's quite yeah. a bit. Yeah. All right. Uh, and we are coming up on the end of our time because okay. we're just trying to keep right. things short. What's uh, one piece of advice you would give to an aspiring writer? You know, just write what you love. Don't don't try and write for anybody else. Write for yourself first. And if you love it, it's going to find a home. Have, have confidence that what you love, um, somebody else will love too. Okay. Yeah. That is, yeah, that's really good advice. Yeah. So, and thank you very much, Betsy. Thank you. You have been listening to Quantum Froth Dispatches by Michael Haspel. Music and other cues are provided by The Fat Rat. The song you're hearing is Monody, featuring Laura Brem. If you'd like to support the podcast, please visit www.patreon.com QFD. Thank you for listening, and we now return you to your mundane reality.